Hello. Were you aware that uh, Zechariah, the prophet, uh, mentioned okay, he mentioned uh, all the things happening today with our with the flat Earth movement? Um, I'll tell I'll tell you I'll show you about it. But what I want to say is this: if you're a flat earther and, and if you uh, see this way please realize uh, that it's not time to be cool and it's not time to uh, to think you have what it takes to see this way you're inspired uh, by God and should handle it responsibly and this is how I'm finding all this out it's all in here okay so Zechariah told us about this very specifically. Um, we'll start in chapter 12 of Zechariah, uh, verse 2. Now, this is kind of leading up to it, but Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about, when they shall be in the siege both against Judah and against Jerusalem. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of earth be gathered together against it. That, that is what we're talking about here. This is Zechariah prophesied us prophesying. If that makes sense. Yeah, that, that's, he told, he said, well, we're going to get to understanding here. Um, we'll skip to verse 10. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplications. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. Um, I got to stop there and remind everyone that denies the Savior, the Jesus Christ, that uh, Zechariah and Isaiah and all these prophets talked about Jesus and the things that happened to Jesus long before Jesus came, okay? So let's, you know, don't try to hide that from your mind. These were foretold things, and now we're going to prove once again that it's happening again with the Flat Earth Movement, okay? Um, okay, sorry about that little interruption. Um, they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son and shall be in bitterness for him as one is in bitterness for his firstborn. In that day shall there be a great mourning in Jerusalem as the mourning of Hadradrimmon in the valley of Megadon. And the land shall mourn every family apart, the family of the house of David apart and their wives apart, the family of the house of Nathan apart and their wives apart. The family of the house of Levi apart and their wives apart. The family of Shammai apart and their wives apart. And all the families that are all the families that remain, every family apart and their wives apart. Okay, now this is where it gets good. Chapter 13, verse 1. In that day, there shall be a fountain opened to the house of David and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and uncleanness. Um, I have met lots of people, uh, both Christian and not, uh, that are flat earthers, that have experienced uh, a sort of cleansing within their own life uh, 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 of sin. They, they've been... Uh, perfecting things and not well not that anyone's perfect I'm saying they've been working on the the worst parts very quickly and I, I'm just saying I've experienced this in my life uh, a great change um, and it shall come to pass this is verse 2 of chapter 13 in Zechariah and it shall come to pass in that day saith the Lord of hosts that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land and they shall no more be remembered and also I will cause the prophets and the unclean spirit to pass out of the land. I think uh, that's self-explanatory for the flat earthers too. <laughs> okay, verse 3. 
And it shall come to pass that when any shall yet prophesy, then his father and his mother that begat him shall say unto him, Thou shalt not live, for thou speakest lies in the name of the Lord. And his father and mother that begat him shall thrust him through when he prophesieth. Um, yeah, verse 4. And it shall come to pass in that day that the prophets shall be ashamed, every one, of his vision when he hath prophesied. Neither shall they wear a rough garment to deceive. It means they're not going to try to deceive. Um, but he shall say, I am no prophet. I'm a husbandman, for man taught me to keep cattle from my youth. And one shall say unto him, What are these wounds in thine hands? There's another reference to the coming Savior. Okay, uh, What are these wounds in thine hands? Then he shall answer, Those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Okay, uh, anybody that is a flat earther has been hurt in the house of their friends. I guarantee it. Okay. Uh, and there's all sorts of different scales of, of and, and all sorts of different things about related to that. But um, the point that I want to make is, is one that maybe people haven't thought of before much, but um, in Isaiah, I have to go back there. I just did a video about it, but Isaiah, it says in verse, in chapter 42, verse six, it says, I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness, and will hold thy hand, and will keep thee, and will give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles. That's something very similar to what God himself did when he manifest, and, and we pierced him, okay? Uh, and it's, it's just very similar. As, I'll just point that out. Um, okay. Uh, let's see, we'll just go to, this is important right here, verse 8 and 9. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but a third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, I will hear them. Or, and I will hear them, I will say, it is my people, and they shall say, the Lord is my God. Okay, within the flat earth movement, you can see that there is a, uh, you know, there's several different cliques. I don't know what you'd call it, but um, I see this happening myself. Okay, so what, what it said there is uh, being brought through the fire. Uh, we're going to go to Revelation and... Jesus uh, dictated that, well, an angel did, but these are Jesus' words uh, when he's in heaven telling us about what must come to pass, what will be in the future. And um, Revelation chapter 3, verse uh, 18, uh, Jesus is saying this to, to us, anyone that has ears to hear. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, now this is important, guys. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. That's an offer you don't want to turn down. That's an awesome gift, okay? And it's real. Um, so here's, a, here's something to explain how, how this is happening. Okay, this is Jesus himself said this stuff when he was on the earth 2,000 years ago. Um, he said, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, like another Holy Spirit, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth. Okay, this is important, you guys. Whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. 
but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Okay. Uh, the, Jesus isn't saying this just for fun. He, he's saying, uh, well, we're not done yet. Okay. He said in, in John 16, verse 13, Jesus said, Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. He shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he shall show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. That's awesome. And that he does that. And it's all in here. You, you, you read this. And, it, and especially if you have eyes to see flatter, this is something that becomes alive. Literally, it's the living word of God in your hand. So, and if you don't have a Bible, uh, email me, ftupworld at gmail, E-F-T-U-P-W-O-R-L-D at gmail.com. And I'll send you a Bible. Give me your address or whatever. All right. Um, and I think that, oh, well, nope, nope. There was one more verse that I had. Uh, okay. Oh, well, I guess I'm going to read this one too. Uh, this is chapter 14, verse 19 in John, the Gospel of John. Yet a little while, apparently about 2,000 years, and the world seeth me no more. Or, well, no, he was talking about when he got, when he ascended to heaven. Okay, sorry. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me. Because I live, ye shall live also. And then, okay, this is for the flat earthers who are maybe not understanding that they're inspired by uh, Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God. Okay, verse 20 in chapter 13. Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomever I send receiveth me. And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. So, um, receive Jesus. And I, I would suggest reading these, the red letters in, in, the, in the book of John, towards the end, uh, John 17. Read John chapter 17, if you're a flat earther, okay? Understand that it is no, uh, it, you, we're not giving anything up to love Jesus Christ. It's the most awesome thing uh, that anybody has ever known. So, um, if you haven't if you haven't found any value in that yet, please try to. Okay, that, that was about all I had to say about that. Zechariah told us about it.